people. I'm not in charge of all this stuff. Tell the truth. That don't like me. No, she likes you. She asks about you. Oh, she asks about me. She asks about you all the time. What'd she say? She said, how your big friend doing? My big <laughs> Is that what that think about me? I'm big like that? For real? <laughs> the Jones. The great Chris Rock Thank in you. attendance with us, starred in a new movie, Top 5. Thank you. Talk to me about this. I, I really am interested in knowing what was the motivation behind you making this movie? Uh, you know what? I, I just wanted to have a vehicle that I could star in and be as funny and do the kind of stuff I wanted to do. I wrote it. I actually wrote the movie when I was on the set of Grown Ups 2. Okay. Yeah, because I didn't have a lot to do. I felt, <laughs> I felt like, I was, like I was hardened on OKC. I was right. coming off the bench, <laughs> and I wanted to create a situation right. where I could start right. and contribute. I had a ball doing Grown Ups, all the Grown Ups. So. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I sat down and wrote this movie, called up my friends. You know, Sandler's in it, Kevin Hart's in it, J.B. Smooth. Seinfeld. Seinfeld, Cedric the Entertainer, everybody's in it. You know, we, we, it looks good. But with you, it's rarely about just being funny. You're always funny. That's a given. But there's always a message. There always seems to be a method to the madness and agenda behind it all. That wasn't the case here? I mean, Stephen, I, I, I try not to bore. Right. I try to enlighten a little bit. You know, so that, you know, there's, 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 there's serious things in the movie. There's, it, it's a reflection on fame, on how society views fame. There's, you know, there's stuff in there about this substance abuse. There's mm -hmm. some stuff in there just about the, the responsibility of celebrity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff. We in hear about that often when it comes to celebrities. One of the things we don't hear about enough of how beautiful it is to be famous or right. how beautiful it is to oh, be rich great. and famous. Break it down for us. It's Tell us. Great. Let us know. People are nice to you. It's kind of like being a hot chick. You know, people, oh, there's always a, a seat. Mm -hmm. And there's, oh, hey, there's room in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. and People wave at you when you're a hot chick. Don't it's have to wait online. You never have to wait online. It's like being, yeah, it's kind of like being Jennifer Lawrence or something. That's mm. what it's like to be famous. Chris Rock, I got to ask you this, though, because there's a lot of stuff going on in the sports world, and we'll get to the court of play or the field of play in just a second. Okay. But there's so many issues that have permeated the world of sports. For, for in particular, now everybody, you see these I Can't Breathe t-shirts that guys have been wearing, whether it be Derrick Rose, whether it be LeBron James, yes. Kevin Durant, or the whole Lakers team practically. Yes, yes, yes. What did you make of all of that? I like going it. On? I like it. I like that the players are getting involved. You know, I like, and it's good. It's good. I mean, especially on this case, man. So, J.R. Smith have one that said, I can't read, so, but, uh, you know, he, he, you know they, they, they'll straighten him out. That's right. Yeah, they'll straighten him out. But you had no problem with it whatsoever. Why not? I, I had no problem with it whatsoever. I mean, this is an extraordinary circumstance. We all saw this guy get choked out. Even the WWE, even the worldwide West wrestling does not use the chokehold, okay? Mm. So the WWF has higher standards than the NYPD. Mm. Uh, I got you. You can't just choke out Stone Cold Steve Austin. You do have a lot of people that look at the world of sports and their mentality is just give us our sports. Go out there, play, perform, take your money, be quiet, and go home. There's a lot of people, not everybody, but there's a lot of people that look at e that looks at even the modern day athlete and feel that's the attitude they should have. What do you say to that? Well, I mean, the, the, the mentality is that the athlete is lucky. So you're lucky to be playing, and it's like, no, only people that suck are lucky to be playing. You know, if you're good and you can play, that's your right. Mm. And you're a person, and you have a right to express yourself, you know, somewhat. Mm. You know, you work for a corporation, and there's rules that go along with that. But let's stop acting like athletes are lucky. Mm. They're not, they're, you or I would be lucky right. <laughs> to play professional sports. But people that are actually qualified are not lucky. Mm. They're just good. They worked hard at it. We know a lot of guys that tried and they made it. So let's let's treat them like the you know like the normal people they are. Getting back to your movie for a second, I, the name struck me. Top five. How much of a role, if any at all, did the world of sports play in the title of that movie and just just the whole theory behind it? I mean, just there's a thing when you get guys together, especially mm -hmm. black guys, especially you know a barber shop or whatever, whatever the occasion may be that we just start naming our list, you know, and it's top five rappers and top five running backs, mm. you know, and top five point guard, Mo Cheeks, man, nah, <laughs> man, Kenny Anderson is underrated, right. you know, it's, you know, you just have those arguments back and forth, so I, I thought, I, I just like the spirit of the name. Top five comedians ever. Top five comedians ever. Uh, I'm going to go, Richard Pryor is the greatest comedian to ever breathe. Mm. Okay, uh, you know, hey, Cosby 
I don't, you know, I know what's going on. Yes, yes. Pete Rose got hit, right? <laughs> yes. So, uh, George Carlin was amazing. Uh, Eddie Murphy is just was a dynamic, dynamic comedian. And, it, you know, people that don't remember, Rodney Dangerfield, if you're a kid or whatever, go on YouTube right now, you will scream. That's how funny this man was. Why isn't Chris Rock in that top five? Uh, hey, I'm still a, 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 a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a rapper. I don't name myself. Right. <laughs> I got you. Know, you. Know, my favorite album was this year. <laughs> Mine. That's like it's very rapperish. I'm not Kanye. Right. You know. God bless Kanye. He's Do good. you feel like athletes when asked about who's the greatest or whatever do you ever find yourself thinking that an athlete that it's okay for an athlete to name themselves if they were asked such a question as to whether or not I mean, they should be in the top five who can say that though who i think michael jordan i think michael jordan could say that i guess he could. i think kareem abdul jabbar could say that kareem abdul jabbar could say that he's got the most points it's right. almost like you can't even argue it i mean you know what put this way if you got the Bible, the Koran, and every religious book of all time and got them all together, after God, you know what the number two most popular word in all those books are? What? Humble. Mm. Good point. Humble. Mm. Humble's a big, you know, you know, driving force in the world. So be humble. Thinking about it, thinking along those lines, Kobe Bryant came oh, across. I like that. I like that. That doesn't bother me at all. But Kobe <laughs> Bryant, Kobe Bryant came across as, as as humble when he passed Michael Jordan as third on the all-time list, even though there were others that used it as an excuse to try to uh, surmise that there was a comparison between him and MJ. What did you think when Kobe passed MJ all-time, and where would you rank Kobe in the pantheon? I mean, okay, first of all, Kobe's humble because Kobe realized it took him 19 years to do what Jordan did in 15. So okay. It's no, it's, that's no time to do the sack dance. That's true, you think? that's true. But he did last that long. He did last that long. Right. Kobe's one of the best ever, man. I mean, mm. come on. He's he's top nine or right. top seven. You know? <laughs> right, I got you. You know, on a good day, on his best day, he's top five. He's He has the, he's almost, he's like the Larry Holmes of basketball. Cause it, By that you mean what? Because Larry Holmes was Larry great Holmes now. Larry Holmes was great, but because he followed Muhammad Ali so closely, mm -hmm. he never really got to do he was deserved. Mm. And Kobe, though he's made all this money and endorsements and stuff, because he followed Jordan so closely, you know, he never, we never really appreciate him like we actually should. Having said that, do you find anybody else outside of Kobe in the game of basketball today that deserves to be mentioned in the same breath? Not to say that they're better or just as, or equal to an MJ or whatever, but that need, that deserves to be in the conversation. Is there anybody other than Kobe? LeBron, LeBron James, put it this way. This is how good LeBron James is. When Michael Jordan left the Bulls, they went to the Eastern Conference Finals. Like, they almost went to the championship with Michael Jordan gone. Mm -hmm. When LeBron James left the Cleveland Cavaliers with the exact same team, they were the worst team in basketball. Mm. So, I mean, I'm not saying he's as good as MJ, but he has an effect on a team that is unparalleled to anybody in the game today. I put my head down. You could put Michael, you could put LeBron James on any team in basketball right now, and they are a 50 t win team. I agree. I put my head down, however, because you mentioned the word worse, and you mentioned the word basketball. And obviously, oh, being no. a native New Yorker, you know where that is taking me, to the New York Knicks. Now, I know how depressed I have been. <sighs> what about you? It's a sad year, man. I, I can't. I, I mean, hey, we're going to get a good draft pick. Uh, let's you hope. keep saying that. Can we get a good pick? Can we get the number one pick? Can we be, have a culture of patience? Can we just build this thing back up? I mean, I look at Melo. It's kind of like the Mets with David Wright. You're almost like, why sign a guy if you're not going to surround him right. with, with pieces? I, I mean, and I say that in respect to Melo. Mm. Like, I kind of want to see him in the game. Yes. You know what I mean? In like, games that matter. Yes, I would, I would like to see a guy that good in games that matter. I wish, I, don't, I mean, you know, I don't, don't wish he went to Chicago, but I wish he was playing in more competitive games. Um, Do you see any hope? Do you see any hope? This year? Yeah, yeah, uh, 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 down the know. line, th two, three years, Derek Fisher, R Phil Jackson. Do you see any hope, hope in sight? I hope they turn it around. I hope that we show patience. I hope that we embrace a culture of, um, 
it seems like we're turning away, turning away the smarter players for some reason. Mm. So we get rid of Tyson Chandler. We we get rid of Jeremy Lin, mm. who, you know, is not the greatest player, but actually turned out to be better than Raymond Felton, Shumpert, and J.R. Smith. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Like, like, I'm not, you know. And now I see, you know, there's rumblings about Hardaway. It's just... I don't know. You brought up, you know, just being smart, brilliant, just, et cetera. Uh, we, some, some would make that argument right now that Steve Kerr might be the smartest dude going because not only is he doing the job in Golden State, but he took the job in Golden State instead of taking the Knicks job. I'd like to know I mean, if Golden you've been seeing that. I know a, gr a great place to live. No, well, <laughs> yes, I know that. And they've got a crew, no question. they got a crew. How are you feeling about what you're seeing from them? I like what I'm seeing from them. But we've seen, you know, Sacramento play like this. We've seen Phoenix play like this. We've seen, you know, jump shooting teams before. Um, if I was running Golden State, mm -hmm. I would sit Bogut and Lee. They wouldn't play more than 12 minutes to rest for any game the rest of the season. Why? Because they can, because Golden State could right now play 500 ball the rest of the year and make it into the playoffs. And their big problem the last two, three years is the fact that their bigs aren't healthy in the playoffs. One last quick question. How's that? Beyond on this. One, one that's last that's quick what question. Pop would do. One last quick question. You was once on the cover of Sports Illustrated. <laughs> yes, I was. Wasn't a bad thing for you. No, not at all. Sometimes people perceive it as being that way. Not the case for you. No, no, I didn't, you know, it helped me out. There was no Sports Illustrated <laughs> things for me. <laughs> the star of top five, the one and only Chris Rock, right in here for Sports Illustrated. Always good. Proud of you, oh, bro. Good, good to see you. Back to Linda and David. Great.